Hi guys and welcome back. I'm very happy to see you again. So today we will once again be talking about the best hockey league in the world, about the NHL National Hockey League. And we have another play in series round preview ahead of us. This time it will be the 7th place New York Islanders and they will be facing the 10th place Florida Panthers to so the matchup of the Eastern Conference. So let's jump right into it. When we look at both teams and their overall record, New York Islanders, uh, when the season was cancelled, they had 80 points, whereas the Florida Panthers had 78 points. So really there is no difference between these two teams and the way they have been playing this season because there are only there is only two point gap between Florida and New York Islanders, which is only one victor victory. So really both of these teams have a pretty much even record and it should be a nice series to watch definitely and right from the beginning I can say that we can see on this side of the board the defensive minded team and on this side of the board more of a offensive minded team and of course the both teams are coached by, the, by a very very experienced coaches New York Islanders under the leadership of Barry Trotz and the coach of the Florida Panthers of course Joel Quenneville another gorgeous coach there so let's start with New York Islanders in their most productive guys this season number one who else than Matthew Barzal this season for him 60 points 19 goals 41 assists Another good campaign for the young Barzell, and he's very fast. We all know that his skating abilities are just out of this out of this world, and he has a go good shot as well. So definitely, Matthew Barzell will be one of the key players in this series. Definitely, number second most productive guy from New York Islanders is another forward, Brock. Nelson, the American guy, 40, 54 points this season, 26 goals, 28 assists, a good campaign for Brock Nelson as well. And number three, I decided to go with um, with um, the Lee, so Anders Lee, but also uh, Josh Bailey had the same point totals as Anders Lee, but Anders Lee had more goals. So Anders Lee, 43 points, 20 goals, 23 assists. Uh, so a solid season overall for him as well when we take into consideration that the season was cut short because of the coronavirus pandemic of course the goalies on the side of New York Islanders the guys of the Mitch Korn the trainer of the goalies uh, Semyon Barlamo 91.4 save percentage Thomas Grice 91.3 save percentage so Varlamo, when he was coming into the New York, to the Islanders, he wasn't in his best form. He had been uh, catching the pucks a lot better in the, in the past. But once again, Mitch Korn proved his abilities to absolutely put the goaltenders on the next level. He has done it with Robin Leonard, he has done it with Thomas Grice, and this time Mitch Korn, the trainer of goalies in New York, has done it also with Samuel Barlamo. A very good season for Barlamo, this 91.4 save percentage tells you all. He has been really good, and I still, I think a lot of experts still don't know who will be the starting uh, choice for uh, Barry Trotz. It will be very hard to decide if they will go with Barlamo or Grice. I would think it would depend on the current form uh, which they both would show in the preseason or basically in the camp in these next days. So we'll see. Definitely tell me also down in the comment section below who do you think will be the starter, Barlamo or Grice? My personal choice would be probably Thomas Grice. Um, he has been with the Highlanders for a longer period of time than Barlamo, but still, we do not know. They may also choose to go with the Russian goaltender as well. Time and ice per game. The leader is Ryan Pulak, 22 minutes, two, 24 seconds average. And the second place goes to Pelek with uh, 21 minutes and 7 seconds. Um, so both of these defenders, very good. Pulak and Pelek. Also, there is... Um, yeah, some other good uh, defenders as well on the side of New York Islanders. Special teams, power play, very poor for Islanders, only 17.3%. That's this exactly same as, for example, from the West National Predators. So that's 24th place in the league. Penalty kill, 
80 points save percent, a little bit better, 15 place in the league. Goals for very interesting statistics. New York Islanders has scored only, they have scored only 189 goals, which is pretty much low amount, but they have allowed only 190 goals, which is also a very low amount of goals. So overall, this clearly shows you that New York Islanders are defensive minded. We all know that, even in the last season, Barry Trotz was able to transform the team the, the the year before so the season 2017 2018 I do believe before Barry Trotz came the New York Islanders were the worst uh, defensive team in the league they have allowed the most goals but then came Barry Trotz and like this it just absolutely transformed he just absolutely transformed the mindset of the players and the culture of the whole club and New York Islanders were last season, so 2018-2019, the best defensive uh, squad in the whole league and they allowed the least amount of goals. So that clearly shows you how good of a coach Barry Trotz is. When we look at Florida Panthers, their top scorers, Jonathan Huberdo, Hoobie Dooby Doo, so uh, 78 points, 23 goals, 55 assists. I think that currently Jonathan Huberdo is the most underrated player in the whole NHL. Also, the majority, of course, majority of players and also probably fans would tell you that the most underrated player is his teammate, Alexander Barco, but I honestly think that Huberdo is very good as well. And this season was just absolutely, I think, a career year for him. Even last season he was playing really well, but this season I think he just took it to another level. And Jonathan Huberdo, 78 points in this a coronavirus short and season that are just decent statistics and even Barco the second place Finnish player couldn't keep up with the Hooper though. So Barco this season 62 points, 20 goals, 42 assists, a good season for him as well. Number three goes to the best striker or best goal scorer of Florida Panthers, the sniper Mike Hoffman who has got 59 points, 29 goals and 30 assists as of this season. Then when we look at the goaltenders, Florida has played three goaltenders this season. The, number, the best according to save percentage is Drieger with 93.8 save percentage but he has played in only 12 games this season so we don't have really that, that higher scale or higher amount of games to really tell if he is that good as the numbers would suggest. Number two uh, goaltender is Sergei Bobrovsky with 90%, but really Bobrovsky has been a big disappointment for the whole Florida Panthers organization this season. He definitely has not lived up to the to the expectation that the Florida is giving him 10 million dollars uh, per season on average. His cap hit is 10 million dollars, and that's just he has not provided that good. Uh, good saves when the Florida really needed it. So definitely Bobrovsky is a big disappointment, but we, he could uh, definitely uh, build up his reputation in this playoff and I think that he will be very highly motivated and I do believe that Bobrovsky will be the starter this uh, summer mm -hmm. and I think that he has the best chance right now this summer in the playing round or even then in the playoffs when Florida, if Florida will be able, able to advance to show all of the Florida Panthers fans that he really is the guy they could count on and um, that he will be very good in that in the next season as well. So a big opportunity for Bobrovsky this season or oh, this uh, summer definitely. And then we also have Sam Montembeau, a young goaltender who also was playing this season for Florida Panthers some games. When we look at time on ice average it should surprise no one that number one is Eggblad, Aaron Eggblad with 22 minutes 58 seconds, so almost 23 minutes per game. And number two is another defender, the Swedish guy Anton Strollman, who came from Tampa Bay Lightning, I do believe. Okay, uh, power play percentage for Florida. They, ha they are a good offensive team, they have a very talented offensive guy, so their power play is pretty much good 21.3%, 10th in the league. Uh, a decent statistics, I would say. Penalty kill, on the other hand, not that good. They have problems with defensive. We have talked about it before. 78.5% 20th in the league. When we look at the goal score, they have scored 228 goals. That's a lot one. That's a lot one just to tell you. For example, compared with New York Islanders, in what, something like 70 matches, 70 games, they have scored 
a 20, no, 30, 30, 30, that's 2, that's 30, uh, something like 30, almost 40 goals more than New York Islanders. So really their offense is a lot better than New York Islanders is, but, but their defense is a lot lot worse than New York Islanders is because they have allowed 224 goals that's 34 more than New York Islanders in something more like 70 games so really that's the difference between these two teams uh, defense offense here so it will be interesting to see if the defense would be able to beat the offense or if offense would have enough power to beat the defense and score that goals. What's also very interesting is to look at their head-to-head -head matchups as of this season on the 13th of October. Uh, New York Islanders won 3-2 in shutout, shootout against Florida. 9th of November, New York Islanders have won 2-1 against Florida and on 30th, 13th of December, New York Islanders won once again 3-1 against Florida. So three games, three wins for Islanders. Even this may suggest something. And you can clearly see that New York Islanders uh, allowed Florida to score only two goals here, one goal here, and one goal here. And if New York Islanders would be able to, to basically um, protect or to, to silence the very good forwards of Florida, such as Hubudo, Barco, Hoffman, Dadono, uh, etc., etc., if they would be able to do that, to silence them and to, to make them score only one goal per game or two goals, that will be a very big problem for Florida because their defense is not good. They are allowing a lot of goals and even the offense like New York Islanders one, they would be able to score some goals and if their defense would be working properly and they would not allow Florida to really put that high amount of goals in the net, I think New York Islanders would eventually come out on the top of this matchup. So my personal tip, I'll just take my marker here, my personal tip, as I probably suggested in the recent seconds, I think that New York Islanders would come out both on the, at the top my tip is a 3-1 victory uh, for New York Islanders in this series, so three games to one in favor of New York Islanders. But it will be definitely an interesting series to watch, I'm sure as well, especially that battle of Barry Trotz and Joe Quenneville should be very, very, very highly contested. So we'll see. Thank you guys very much for watching this video till the end. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like down below and also subscribe. It would mean really a ton for me, guys. And uh, I really hope you did enjoy this video. And we'll do also some other series previews. We have got three series previews left because I have already done it on this channel uh, apart from these four other series previews. So definitely if you didn't watch them, go and check them out. And yeah, so we have still to go from Western Conference. We have to mention the, um, the Minnesota against Vancouver. And, and I do believe it's... Another, well, we have already done Oilers against Blackhawks, we have already done Predators against uh, Coyotes, we have already, that's from Western. From Eastern, we have done almost all except for one, uh, so we have done Islanders against Panthers, we have done Rangers against Hurricanes, and we have also done the uh, preview of the series between Pittsburgh Penguins and Montreal Canadiens. So yeah. We we'll still have three series to go. Hope you did enjoy this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay safe. Really, I wish you stay safe. I wish you have a beautiful day. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. And I will see you probably quite soon. We'll see each other, guys. At least I hope very soon. Bye, guys.